Hi guys, welcome back. This is my hair. How are you guys doing today? Today is actually my day off, so your girl is just chilling. Chilling in the village. Chilling like a villain in a hood. Feeling good. Trying out something new. Got some dirty ginger here. No, it's not alcohol, y'all. It says non-GMO. Puregreen.com. And I usually get, like, pure ginger. But this is dirty ginger. <laughs> so I'm going to see what it's about. It has charcoal, ginger, lemon, and agave in it. And when I purchased it, because I actually just got it, you guys. It wasn't black. It was white. It was clear, actually, and then uh, I think as I shook it up with the charcoal, it colored the drink. But I'm going to try this out, y'all. I'm about to try it out right now on camera, so pray for your girl, because I don't know. I don't think I ever had charcoal before, but I hear a lot about it. And they told me, I was like, so what does it do? Like, what's the point of it? And they said that it cleanses your system out. So, we gonna see. And I also got me some nuts. <laughs> my favorite, you guys. These are my favorite here. Your girl loves some almonds. I'm about to throw down. It's crazy because I have not even eaten breakfast yet. And it's like, what time is it? It's 2.31, oh my gosh. 2.31, I haven't eaten breakfast. 2.31 out here on the West Coast, West Side, you guys. This is what, 5.30 over there, where well, you guys are, most of you anyway. It's been a long time since I had me some good almonds. Things are delicious. How y'all doing, by the way? Also got me some Brazilian nuts. Now, I think I had these before. And I asked the lady, I asked the guy, I was like, this almonds taste kind of different. But I said, what kind of nuts are these? Because I think I had these growing up. And I was like, it's Brazilian nuts. I'm like, come on, these, they got to be something else. But I'm about to get into the topic in a minute, y'all. I'm just, I got to get something in my body, in my system. You guys know what kind of nuts these are? Oh my god, they are delicious. Mmm. What kind of nut is this? It's shaped like a pear. It tastes so good. And it tastes like it was just picked. It would just pick from the earth. It tastes kind of earthy. But, guys, I'm about to get into this topic. Thumbs up. Heart this video if you guys are in love. I think it's just time to fall in love. I think, you know, it's spring. It's about to be summer. But we're still in spring. Roses are blooming. Flowers are blooming. And I feel like I'm blooming. I feel like I'm starting to open up a little bit more. Which is a good thing because your girl being a little bit guarded. with guys sometimes. Sometimes I can be kind of guarded because I'm like, I don't need no clowns in my life, you know what I'm saying? Your girl trying to stay focused on school. Knock out this dissertation for my PhD. I might go ahead and try this, y'all. Ooh, I can smell the ginger. I'm going to try it straight. Oh, it's not that bad. Okay. I think the lemon is balancing the flavor out. Yeah. It tastes like kind of watery. 
surprise. I'm gonna mix it with my drink. I got a shake. I got a King Kale shake. King Kale with dates and plant protein. Delicious, you guys. This is just the bomb. Bomb diggity here. But, yeah, it's like it's springtime, and I'm like, I guess I could kind of open up a little bit and I don't know, let my wings spread out and just, just test the market and see what's out there because sometimes I know I can be a little mean sometimes, but guys, they're just like, damn, you just give me a chance. You just stop acting all stuck up. And I feel like I'm going to be acting stuck up. I just be like, dude. If I make time for you, you better be worth it, man. Don't waste my time. Time is so precious. And especially at this age in life that I'm in. I'm 35 years old. I'll be 36 in September. And like I say, this is chess, not checkers, man. You got to make sure you right, make the right moves in life. Because one wrong mistake can mess you up. Ooh can mess you up but i think i'm feeling good y'all i'm feeling good now i know y'all like who is he who is he i am telling y'all i'm not telling y'all who he is but y'all probably might get to meet him y'all might get to meet him we'll see i do have my eyes on this one guy though because I feel like the universe decides for us. I think that as much as we would like to believe as human beings that we have choice in the matter when it comes to love, I think the universe decides. This is good. What do y'all think? I think it's something about the universe that says it's time. I'm going through like a lot of transition in my life. I just finished, you guys, my third year of my PhD program. Like this is big. And I'm about to embark on my last practicum rotation. It's big, it's major because this is my last time working for free you guys i've been working for free for the past two years and i'm just like i'm a girl ready to get paid man y'all know like i'm on I'm my grind but this is a major sacrifice anybody know going to work towards a doctoral degree you know getting any kind of freaking higher education degree it's a sacrifice, and especially within a PhD program, we have to do a certain number of hours. So many hours, it's like thousands of hours before we can get our degree and then eventually get licensed. We just have to give so many hours away for free. But I am approaching my last year of unpaid labor, <laughs> so that's major for me. And... I'll be, I'll be making, I'll be reaping the uh, fruits of my labor pretty soon, financially, financial-wise, from that perspective, but I think that it's like, I feel like the universe knows the right person to send your way. That's how love happens, I think. It's just, it's magical. Love is so beautiful, you guys, because I couldn't have asked for this. But I feel like the universe knows. When I say the universe, I mean like a higher power, like something that's bigger than me, right? Knows what it is that I like, what kind of guy is appropriate for me. And then, boom, I'm just like, dang, where you come from? You just came out of nowhere. Just like, we kind of fit together like a glove. How old is my hair? That's a weird question. How old is it? <laughs> How old are my dreads? That's a weird question because I say that I think my dreads, even though I've had my dreads since 
2005 that will make it like 14 years my hair has grown and I've trimmed it like throughout the years so I don't know I think like it um, it cycles it creates like a fresh like a fresh new batch so to speak every so often and being that I trim my hair I probably have cut all together I don't know at least 10 inches off my hair over the years not just like at one time but you know as my hair grows and you know I'll trim it make sure that it grows evenly but yeah it's been overall 14 years somebody asked me the other day like are you gonna cut your hair I'm like girl no she got dressed but hers is shorter I'm just like I'm not cutting my hair she's like why not like my hair is a part of me this is me my hair is me and this is my brand but that's off topic I'm like I asked myself like am I ready for love you know I mean I think I'm falling in love sometimes you know like when you know like you like somebody right and you try to like stop yourself from falling in love <laughs> like it's a bad thing like I'm not gonna fall in love and try to slow down the process but then I, that's why I say I think it's a universe because the universe like these there's a force that lives outside of us is much stronger than we are you know as human beings and so you know of course as human beings we have power to make decisions to think to act you know to choose what we want to do but at the end of the day, like, the force that lives outside of us, I think, is just so much stronger. And no matter how much I try to tell myself, like, I'm not falling in love, you know, I'm going to, like, finish my Ph.D., I'm going to get licensed, I'm going to get, you know, established in my career, and then love happens. Like, out of nowhere. Even my last relationship, I think about um, when I was in New York and I fell in love. I, I didn't see that coming either. I'm just like, dang. That's how it usually happens. It's like people, men and women, sometimes they work so hard trying to find love. They look and they search and they do all kinds of things, you know. Like some people, they go out to the club and they... You know, spend all this money on nice outfits and girls get dolled up and their hair and their nails and their makeup and all of that and still don't find love, right? I think love it don't come that way. It happens when you are least expecting it to. Like, when you ain't even really got your mind on it. And then, boom, you just encounter someone that it's almost like it's made for you. And then when you're getting to know that person, you feel like you've known that person for a long time. You know, from a spiritual perspective, it's like you and that person's spirit have already met. That's how I, that's how I conceptualize, like, love. And, you know, I don't know if you guys already heard the saying it's kind of cliche but it's like when people say oh, how do you know that you're falling in love how do you know it's love you will know <laughs> you will know it's more like your spirit knows your spirit tells you, your soul tells you like this is the one there's no question about it it ain't no doubt it ain't no like is she the right one you don't even have to think about that if anything you might be afraid you know, especially if you've been in love before. That sometimes is a big indicator because let's say you've been in love before. It didn't work out, right? The fear is more associated with fear of failure, fear of being hurt, let down, disappointed. So when you meet someone who is like your soulmate, your match, you get that feeling inside like, you're kind of afraid but you're also excited because you're you know like you're excited about the possibility of you know what it could look like spending your life with this person you know giving yourself to this person 
<laughs> yeah. And what I realize is that you don't really have to say too much. Like, when it's the right person, you know how sometimes you go on a date with someone, right? And you're trying to decide, like, is this person right for me? And people do a lot of talking. You know, so much talking, maybe trying to prove themselves to the other person, trying to sell themselves, you know, asking questions. Of course, it's important to ask questions, but I think when it's love, it's so much to be said on a meta level, metacognition level, where you're not even communicating with words, but your body is communicating with each other. And you feel a sense of ease. Like, that's why it's important, you guys. I know a lot of us, you know, we are in tune with our, our spirit. But it's important to be in tune. <laughs> it's crazy. He's calling me. He's calling me now. Let's see. Okay. The connection is weird. But it's like... When you are with this person, like I was saying, when you're in tune with your, your spirit, right? Um, and you trust, you know, you trust your instincts, you trust your spirit. Your spirit will let you know more than anything. If you're falling in love. Now, if you guys are in love, and you've been in love for a long time, Maybe you can, maybe you can't remember what it was like when you fell in love with your partner. But if you can remember, feel free to share your experience below. I think it's different. Like, falling in love is different depending on who you're falling in love with, too. And, like, where you are in your stage of life. Um, because, you can, let's say, you can, have, you can fall in love with one person and it can be one, an experience, right? Years later down the road, you may fall in love with someone else, and that experience may look totally different. But one thing for sure that I know when you're falling in love, and this is not something that's superficial or made up, but when people are falling in love with somebody else, it's almost like you want to be around that person a lot. You know, you want to be around that person. If you come across somebody and you just like, oh, I don't want to be around you, like you're you annoy me, that person probably ain't for you. If you come across a person where you just feel like you can't get enough of them, you want to learn more about them, you want to be in their presence. That's a good sign right there. It's a really good sign. It's something that pulls people together. Like I said, it's like a gravitational pull. Like gravity, you can't defeat gravity. I mean, of course, unless the technology, you know. But you can't defeat gravity. That's a gravity, that's a gravitational pull. That's just like love. Love, you cannot try to fight it. Even though I know I try to fight it myself. I'm just like, I ain't falling in love. It's not happening. But it seems like the more you resist, the more it pulls you, right? It's like a magnet, you know? Think of a strong magnet. The more you try to resist and pull away, it's just pulling you in even deeper. And deeper. And then you just give in. It's just like, okay, fuck it. I'll be in love. <laughs> but you better not fuck over me. You know, you better not fuck up. I think the great thing, though, about having experienced love and having been in a relationship, and especially knowing yourself, you know, and knowing other people, like, as you mature, you learn more about yourself and other people, is that you can take those experiences into a new relationship in a good way. It's not to say that you, because you were in a bad relationship and you become bitter, and so then you start treating the new person, you know, as if they are the older, the old person that you were with. No, I'm not saying that. But I mean, like, in, in terms of taking what you know about people and relating to people, you can definitely take that into the, a, next, a new relationship and be able to better communicate with the person, be able to express yourself, to 
figure out, you know, or to think about the things that went wrong and then incorporate, you know, what you learn from that in, in the next relationship. And that's what I think that I have taken away from, you know, my past relationship. Even though, like, they didn't necessarily end bad, like, we are still cool. Like, you know, if I wanted to, I can reach out to any of my exes and be like, what's up? But it's just being able to look back and say, okay, I learned this, you know, about myself. Because if you don't learn shit about yourself, a lot of times people be so, be like, oh, they did this to me. It's always they, they, they. The focus is always on the other person. So you may know the other person very well, which is good, but that's only half of it. You got to know about yourself. That's the golden piece. That's the golden ticket. If you only can write a whole book about the other person and what they did wrong or even right in a relationship, that's only half. That's like you're not you're doing yourself a disservice because the most important thing is to know about yourself. You got to know who you are, you know. Know yourself inside and out. And be able to grow. Like, if you be like, oh, I ain't changed. I'm still the same from the last person you dated. And then you go into an, another relationship unchanged. Usually, like, the same problems are going to happen. But if you like, okay, you know, you take an honest look at your own self. And not to say you did everything wrong or you're a bad person. No. But just looking at, like, the things that maybe you could have done differently, like, you know, the very fine mistakes that you made in a relationship and see how you could have been a better person to your partner, I think that would be helpful. And I think that also can determine how ready you are for your next relationship. And when I ask myself, I'm like, am I ready? I think part of me is like, no, I'm not ready because I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid of the what if. But then a bigger part of me is like, yeah, hell fuck yeah, I'm ready. Like, shit, time is ticking. <laughs> you know, your girl wants to start a family. I want some kids. So, yes, I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to show how um, great of a person that I can be in a relationship. I'm ready to just, you know, experience life with another human being. A person that I care about, that I'm getting to know, that, I mean, the possibilities are endless. And it definitely helps that I study psychology and I'm a therapist. And it's always funny when I have conversation with people. Guys in particular, they're like, dang, you, you just, it's amazing like how easy I'm able to click with you. Like, you know, you seem like you get me. And it can be a person, like we only talk for a few days, but automatically they just feel so safe to open up and tell me everything about them and I sometimes be wondering like damn dude just hold on now you know we just get to know each other like hold up hold up but they feel so safe and I guess that's a good thing but I do have the magic stick <laughs> I mean I have a tendency to be able to obviously know how to build rapport with people very quickly and easily make them feel safe I think that's important to get to know somebody and being able to learn about who they are, you know, even their mistakes. People feel very comfortable talking to me about shit that went wrong in their life. And I don't pass judgment. I think that's, that's, that's the key. I mean, you can be honest and direct and challenge people, but... You don't ever want to make a person feel, you know, in.
inferior, you know, or, f or feel like they are a failure, you know. Because people already have enough of that negative self-talk going on in their head already. People are very well aware of the mistakes that they have made. So you don't have to go and reiterate that. For me, I'm more of a person who likes to listen to people. I'm a great listener. These nuts are so good. I'm a great listener, but I'm also a great... I'm very empathic. And I think empathy, yeah... It's something that you express with words, but it's also something I think that is communicated non-verbally, man. So much of interpersonal relationship interaction is non-verbal. That's why you can't fake it. You can't fake you can't fake certain things because you you can say something with your your mouth, your words. But your body language is going to communicate everything. And even deeper than body language is your spiritual self. It's going to also communicate those things. And that person's spirit that person's spirit can be able to detect and pick up on certain things that, that your spirit is emanating. So, people know when they are safe with someone. Your spirit at a, at a very deep level is going to know. It's going to be at ease. It's amazing, man. That's why we cannot ignore the spiritual realm in which we live in because it's so deep. Some people refer to it as their instinct, which I think, you know, is a part of the spirit too, but when you walk up on somebody, it's like uh, their energy. You can, you can pick up on their energy. And before words are even expressed, it's like, like I was saying earlier, it's like you knew that person before you met them, you know, and I think this is so true, I think that people's spirits can cross before they even meet physically, so it's like when you meet, you know, your defenses aren't going to be up so much, you know, as it was, let's say, a person that you're not meant to be with, your defenses are going to be a little bit down, that when you cross that person physically, you know, in the physical world, it's just like going to be a match made in heaven, you know. Hollywood, they do their best to try to depict this in the movies, you know. And it's just like fireworks go off and everything is just perfect, you know, how they portray love. But it's kind of similar to that when you think about it, though. It's just like things are right, man. You just feel very safe with that person. And that's a good sign, I think when it comes to determining if a person is right for you, if it's real love, because you're just going to feel safe, you're going to feel secure, you're going to feel like you're meeting that person is only um, a continuation of your journey, you know, and that's how I feel at <laughs> that's kind of how I feel now just like dang you just kind of fit right in versus people who ain't for you they don't fit man you don't have to make somebody fit in your life we live in a world with billions of people never try to make somebody fit you know you will always find the right fit the universe will send the right fit to you that's how I like to look at it so for me I don't try to go looking for love. Now, I, I will, may position myself in certain places, but I'm not the one to go looking. I make myself available, at least when I'm ready. If I ain't ready, then I'm completely shut down when it comes to trying to talk to somebody. But the right fit, the right person... Wherever you are at in your life, and I know we all are at different points in our life. I'm kind of like in my grind phase, you know, building. Building. I'm still, I consider myself still young, you know. Building, grinding. It's interesting though, because the guy... He's not even in that phase. He's well beyond. He's well established. So, for him to say it, like, you know, 
it's interesting how different people have different needs, right? And when you come across your partner, your significant other, who's meant for you, they're going to help meet your needs and you will help meet theirs. And we both recognize that we're in different kind of phases in our life. But we can, we are the same age, you know, like we are in the same age range, but there's different phases and he's, you know, well established, making money. And I would say I'm halfway there, you know, and we're going to see, but I feel pretty good about this relationship so far. And. I'm excited. For me, even though, yes, I can identify fear, right? And myself kind of manifest it as hesitation that, you know, I take in relationships sometimes with people. But the fear is pretty quiet. It's not loud fear. It's like very soft, very subtle, it's not even something that's like, don't go, it's more like, I think, traces of my own experiences in life, and just, I guess, how I'm somewhat wired, but at the same time, I realized that my desire to be in love is bigger than that and not only that but what this person spirit is communicating to my spirit and just how it, like the timing of it I think is also what speaks to the fact that I think this is it because I'm like damn I'm not even looking for that but for it to happen in a way that it's just so organic that's how you know y'all please share your thoughts on what I've shared so far I'm it's a beautiful thing though it is a beautiful thing and at the end of the day I feel like people Life is supposed to be a place, like, where we can enjoy each other, you know? Like, we shouldn't live in this world that people are afraid of other people, afraid of love. I shouldn't be talking while I'm eating, but oh well. But yeah, we shouldn't live in a world where, like, oh, you have to be afraid or, you know, oh, love is unsafe and all of that. Like, I feel like we should live in a... how I see life anyway in the world I kind of create my own reality but yeah. live life without fear you know, no fear just of course take precaution sometimes people get the too confused you're not to say that you're just totally aloof you don't take caution but to just you know go with the flow this kind of person I am and there are many times where I, I recognize that, nah, I know I ain't ready for love, but I think that in getting in tune, more in tune with myself, more gaining a deeper understanding of other people, just like, okay, I think I can, I think I can handle it. <laughs> I think I'm ready. I think I'm excited and ready for whatever love has to offer and bring and it's not just about what love can bring but also what I bring to the table and I, I mean I, I feel like women I'm, you know first a woman but I feel like women are kind of wired to love like we're, we're naturally caregivers and caretakers so that's a piece of cake that's a piece of cake when it comes to Am I ready to give love? Of course, I have lots of love to give. Lots and lots. And not only that, not only just romantic love, but I'm actually ready for, hi, 
I'm actually ready, like, for kids. That kind of love, too. You know, motherly love. So, this is a beautiful thing, you guys. Love is wonderful. Because relationships are wonderful. I actually thought about doing this video on a different topic, but I'm like, no, I'm going to talk about love. <laughs> now, for people who are already in relationships, who've been in love, right? Um, who've been in love for a very long time, let's say over 10 years, 10 years or more. Share below what has kept you in love with your partner. Because I know there are times when you probably felt like walking away from the relationship. So, if you feel like sharing, share with us, you know, what has kept you and your partner together. I think that it may sound like common sense, right? But it's not so common sense for people because apparently the divorce rate is still high in America. You know, one out of every two marriages end in divorce. And it's a very complicated, very dynamic thing. You know, it's not something that a lot of people can even articulate what it means, you know, to love some, someone or to be in love. Some people just don't have it figured out. You know, it's like a mystery to a lot of people. So feel free to share your thoughts and your experiences, you know, as it relates to this topic. I'm about to go ahead and wrap this video up. Grab me something to eat. I'll be sitting here like wondering, damn, what the hell to eat out here in Hollywood? The food is not really my cup of tea. have a lot of healthy food out here. I guess it would be a good thing. You know, a lot of vegan food. I'm not a, I'm not a vegan, not a vegetarian. But I'm trying something to eat. Yeah, because the sun really hasn't been out lately, y'all. I've been kind of gloomy lately. I think some of y'all just like watching me. Y'all don't even like listening. Y'all just be like watching me. <laughs> That's a good thing too, though. Thanks for the compliment. You like watching me. I like watching myself too sometimes. I be sitting in the mirror like, damn, girl. This is too fine. Mm. So peaceful out here in nature. I'll catch you guys later. Love you guys. Bye.